Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Moto 16's new texture caching. So this is a feature that will cache or bake textures sort of progressively behind the scenes or automatically. You can use these primarily to view them in the viewport. So if you're using the advanced viewport or the default viewport, you can view things like Moto procedural textures, like noises, dots, you know, ripples, whatever, gradients in the viewport without having to rely on the preview, right? So it's, it's you know, it could be much faster or slower depending on the complexity of your scene. Um, and it has some other uses as well. You can use them just to bake them out at higher resolution if you want to render them in a moto, or you can also render them in third party renders like Octane and things like that. And it's a much easier workflow than the sort of traditional moto baking workflow if you're trying to like bake out all these procedurals and use it in Octane. This will work better. So I'll show that as well. Uh, this little robot guy here, I got off of Sketchfab. This was from an artist named Andy and Norby Skook, or that's what he has on his profile at least. So thank you, Andy. I'll put your credentials in the uh, description below. So you know, as always, uh, Sketchfab is awesome. It's a great place to uh, get models just to mess around with new features in Moto or whatever program you like to use and um, without having to always make your own. So we're gonna use this cute little robot today. And as you can see, we've got some image maps on him already. So I'm using the advanced viewport here. I've got a normal map, an AO map, and a roughness map. And I'm using the advanced viewport because it'll show things like this diffuse amount, right? So this doesn't actually show in the default viewport, but it will show in the advanced viewport along with some other things. So advanced viewport, uh, as you will see in this video, is getting closer and closer to Moto's preview window and giving a really accurate representation of what will be in the final render. It's been like a 10 year work in progress, but you know, it does keep getting better. So maybe we can accelerate that along, but uh, I'm really starting to like it. And yeah, so let's just get going here. So there's a number of, um, things you need to be aware of in this workflow that are going to make your life easier. That's the point of this video. And I'm probably going to just show you how to do it wrong first, and then we'll move on to doing it the right way. So, okay, so like I said, we've got normal map and uh, diffuse map, uh, this ambient occlusion bake on here and a roughness map on there, but we don't have any color. So let's add some diffuse color and let's do a procedure like a gradient. So I'm gonna add layer processing gradient and make sure it's in my robot mask there. And we'll just edit the gradient, middle mouse click to set a key, and we'll just make a sort of fiery uh, texture here at the beginning, something like this. Now you'll notice that the advanced viewport will work with the incident angle input parameter, uh, just you know uh, by default in Moto, uh, which is a great thing. So we don't actually use, you know, we're not gonna use texture caching for this because it already works, right? So we wanna use texture caching for stuff that doesn't work. So some of these incident, uh, or I'm sorry, input parameters work and some don't. So let's pick one that doesn't work. Let's go to, um, in fact, before I do that, let me just pop open a preview window on the side here and I can go like this. We'll look through our camera there. So you can kind of see like, you know, these are looking extremely similar, right? So like I said, the advanced viewport is looking very much like the final ray trace renderer. Um, and that's a good thing. So as Moto continues to evolve, like this viewport will continue to look more like this viewport, which is good. And let's change our gradient input to something else. So instead of incident angle, let's just do like a distance from locator. Let's see here. Go to sample parameters and do Y distance to locator. Okay, and so what happened is you, you'll notice that this turned yellow and then this you know, looks completely different with red on top and bottom. And what we're doing here, let me just go to the side view, is we're going to be, this gradient is going to be keying off of the locator right here, the little texture locator that comes with the gradient. So I move this down and turn on texture locators. You'll see it right here. That's control one, by the way, if you use this toggle. Uh, Pi Mini, if you don't use this, you should definitely you know burn this into your muscle memory. So we're just gonna toggle on texture locators and move it to the bottom. And what we have here with our gradient now is starting at the bottom, we've got yellow and we move you know, higher past one meter or so, we're getting more to red, right? So this is what it's looking in preview. And prior to texture caching, we would always have to have preview open to see this work. It doesn't work in the viewport, but it will work with texture caching. So let's select my robot mask there. And, and here's where I note that texture caching works on masks or at the mask level. And so this is where you have to be kind of clever with it. And so I'm gonna show you like sort of the wrong sort of ugly brute force way to do this, which is probably the way everybody, including me, did this initially. 
is you have it selected. Now I can either right click and say cache selected masks or I can click my new little icon up here and say cache selected masks here. I'll just click that. You'll notice that this turns red and so it's calculating and you notice I have a bunch more images in here that are all calculating, right? And I have a bunch of images here in my clip list that are also sort of showing up and this is kind of blurry over here and it's gonna progressively get better. In fact, maybe I'll just pause my uh, preview window so my processor can work on this guy. So now it's done. So what has happened is it's baked all of these different channels. We've baked the roughness channel, the normal channel, the diffuse color, and the diffuse amount. The thing is like, I didn't want to do all of those. I just wanted diffuse color, right? You know, you'll see these all these different guys here. They're typically collapsed. So there's a little plus button. I know it's really tiny on YouTube, but there's a little plus button next to your robot mask. If I click it, you'll see all these guys here. And these are these new um, items in the clip tree here called texture images. Texture images are they're sort of a procedural item, really. They're not like just a bitmap like uh, these regular image maps are. And these are these sort of uh, progressively baked images that are linked to... Uh, the mask here okay and I don't want to use all of them I just want to again I just want to do the uh, uh, diffuse color because I already have really high resolution great looking images on all these other channels like normal and roughness that I can already see in the viewport so why would I want to cache them you know I wouldn't so I'm going to right click and delete these I'll right click and say delete texture cache so it's going to delete them you see all of them deleted here and we're back to all yellow here and I'm going to select my gradient and control G group it. And that puts it in its own mask here in the shader tree. You'll notice that in Moto 16, it, it's much more helpful. It, it's just a folder icon because it's not masking anything, right? Where the robot is masking a material called robot. If I were to put this to, you know, all, it would change into that sort of group folder there. I'm actually selecting something. So now it turns into a little, you know, a little sphere. This is just for organization. It's not selecting anything, so it's just a folder, which is you know nice for sort of at a glance uh, organization and or reading a shader tree at, at a glance. So anyway, just a nice little Moto 16 uh, thingy they put in there. New icons. All right, let's call this diffuse color group because that'll just help remind us what it is. And now I can just right click on this and say cache selected mask, or click up here with the mask selected and say cache selected masks. And now you'll see, just put it one of these texture images over here on the clip list. And there's just one here. If I click and, and uncollapse that or expand that, you see it right there. And that's a much nicer, much faster way to do it, right? It's already done. Didn't take nearly as long. Didn't take four times as long as I had four different ones of you know baking over there, just the one. And so that's just the first thing. If you're just doing color, create a in like a just a group or like a group uh, mask that for organization inside your um, your material mask, and then use the caching on that mask, not the one with all the different channels in it, because you don't want to mat you don't want to cache everything. I've been told that in the future you'll be able to just select what you want to cache, but right now this is how we're going to do it. Okay, so now that we have this group set up, let's just add another gradient. Let's just do processing. Uh, gradient and for this one let's um, I can unpause this here let's do instead of incident angle we'll do service parameter slope so this is going to be on the slope and we pick a couple colors here do one to 90 we'll just do maybe a like a blue and maybe we'll kind of keep it white over there and so you can see it happening over here in preview really fast so again this sort of begs the question like do do I need texture caching if I can see it super fast in preview? It depends because this is a super simple scene. And if you're doing a really complex scene, you don't want to like restart this entire preview render again. It is much faster just to like uh, progressively bake these things in the viewport, right? And so one thing you'll notice is this didn't start up again. So sometimes it works where, and this again, I think this is just a bug. Um, Sometimes if you add new textures in here, it'll just notice that you added a new texture and automatically start um, progressively caching it. And other times it won't. And so here's an instance when it has not worked. So I'm going to delete and cache again. And here you can see that I'm now caching the blue here. I could see it right here in the viewport, right? And so... That's nice, and if I turn it off, I should be able to see the red, and I turn it off, and it should just you know restart the cache. If I turn it back on, it should restart the cache. So here the cache 
is working when I'm changing things. Sometimes it doesn't, and you have to delete it and recache. So just so you know, you are not the only one. It's not working for all the time. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's add, let's say, uh, let's try a procedural texture. So let's do like an enhanced moto maybe. Let's try swirls. This is kind of a cool one here. I pause uh, preview there. And again, you can see it's turning red, so you know it's doing something. But again, it didn't update over here. So I'm going to right click, delete, and I'm gonna recache it. So yeah, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a version one feature, I guess. So it's a little annoying. They have to keep doing that. But I notice it's like, it's a really hit or miss. I can't tell what I'm doing right or wrong in terms of it updating or not updating. Okay, so there we have it in the viewport, which is pretty neat. So here's our guy in the viewport right there. And you'll notice if I select this right here, right, this little twirl down and select it here, I've got my parameters on the side. This one right here says preview image 64. I believe that is the initial resolution that it starts caching at. So it looks all blurry at the beginning. That's by 64 by 64. And then it resolves to 512 by 512. So I can dump this down to like 128 and you'll see this gets all blurry and goes from 64 to 128, very blurry. But if I go up to like 1024, it's going to you know, start activating again. You can always tell them it's red when it's going. And it's going to take a little bit longer, probably, I think it's just linear, like 512 by 512 takes one second, then 20, 1024 by 1024 is gonna take four seconds, right? So I don't think there's any nonlinear speed up there. So, but yeah, you can see it's a nicer or, you know, higher res image. I can um, adjust the skies. Let's say, let's adjust the swirls parameters here a little bit. Let's do the low clip and upper clip. So maybe take the clip down to 85 to make the uh, whites whiter and low clip to 25 to make the blacks blacker a little more contrast in there and yeah it's doing a good job picking up the changes here and we've got the red going so we know that it's um, cranking away we get this little blocky thing so we know it's working and um, and there it is right there in our advanced viewport so I can also use this as a layer mask now so I could duck, duck it under here again and it, it starts caching right away it notices a change I could right click and change this to a layer mask and it's going to mask between the two again. Now it's caching all three of these, right? It's caching this gradient, it's caching the swirl and it's caching the bottom gradient because it has to show them all together. And so, you know, this uh, is gonna take a little bit longer but it's rendering all that at 1024 by 20, 1024 resolution. So it looks pretty cool like that. I can uh, maybe take my first gradient and, and change the colors a little bit. Let me just unpause this so you can see the, that it's similar over here. Just go to my camera view. So looking the same in the advanced viewport and the uh, the preview window, which is cool. Uh, let's change our gradient instead of like blues and whites. Let's do something like uh, a little more a little fiery, some yellow and magenta, maybe like that. So a little more race car looking on our cutesy little robot. And then I'm going to invert my swirl. So I'll invert that again, starts recaching. You can see a change. So it's picking up these changes really nicely. Uh, most of the deleting the cache and recaching seems to be when adding um, additional textures to the cache. And maybe, you know, maybe it's not supposed to pick those up automatically. Whatever it is, it's easy enough. Just right click, delete, right, right click, recache. Um, but yeah, so it's gone pretty quick here. It's already done. There it is looking good. So, and again, this is that sort of interesting, not interesting, but sort of standardized sort of PBR type workflow we're going to be getting into, I think, you know, the way Substance Painter works, the way Pixel Mixer works. The advanced viewport with, you know, being able to show layer masks and group masks in the advanced viewport, along with gradients and things like that, and uh, hopefully soon occlusion. That we can bake occlusion, so I can actually put an occlusion on top of this if I want to, so I can add layer processing occlusion so it's going to put that there um here it seems so it knows it, it notices that something changed but it's not caching it correctly so let me just pause this and so again i'm gonna right click delete and cache again just so you can see that occlusion is caching so there's occlusion caching nicely right so i can change this to uh like concavity and now it's going to start caching again right I'll just knock this down to, I oh, said 512, right? Because I made a new one. So you can, yeah, you can cache occlusion. There it is, looks pretty cool. Of course, this already has a, 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 a image map with an occlusion, like an ambient occlusion uh, texture already um, on it. So it's not really gonna do us good there. So let me delete that. 
And so let's talk about rendering. Um, so we have these cache textures. They're at uh, 512 resolution, which isn't great, right? Not so good. And if I render over here, they're also at 512 resolution. Again, not great, right? So chunky. So that's not what I want. So with this selected, again, you can twirl down here to get to it, or you can twirl down in this texture image uh, item here, get to it. Just click render off and it'll still display in the viewport, but you can see what happened over here. We got our really nice, you know, procedural textures at, you know, this sort of unlimited resolution going on over here in the render window, which is cool. Um, so that's a little trick you should uh, keep in mind. You don't probably want to render with these. In fact, I almost wonder if they should just be off by default uh, because you're gonna wanna do your final renders with just, you know, these full calculation here with these procedural layers, but um, you can't turn it on and off here. And I can also, like, I'm going to crank this back up to something high, like 2048, and we'll just wait for it to uh, cache. And then you know, we'll take a look at being able to render this in Octane as soon as it's done caching here. And so normally you would have to do um, a bake, right, in Moto. And what's cool about this, I just have one mass caching here, but the shader tree will just you can have like 10 of them going, right? It just does it in the background. It just sort of progressively caches these things, which is super useful. And I'm actually, this is only an eight core machine. I actually throw all my power towards the GPU typically. So this is just an eight core Intel. And so if you have a lot of CPU cores, uh, then obviously you're gonna, those are gonna benefit you when it comes to caching a lot of different uh, masks at once here. So this should be done in just a second. I'm gonna talk through the whole thing. Um, Okay, here we are at our full 2K uh, cache. So that looks pretty good, right? And so, you know, if I wanted to render this, um, I would just click that back on and hit my preview here. Now it's actually rendering that image, which is pretty, at 2K, that's, that's pretty good. So you may want to bake those things um, or just, you know, put them at a high resolution and just render with them if you want to, if you don't want to click off the render and just render the pure procedurals. But you might be thinking, okay, well, does this work in Octane? Because if you're like me, you use Octane for almost all of your rendering nowadays. So I go over to Octane, we'll just open up an Octane viewport. And here we go. And you'll see that, no, it actually is not working in Octane. So you might be thinking, oh crap, this doesn't work in Octane. What am I going to do? But there's actually a really simple solution here. I just have my mask selected and I come up here to my little icon and I say, save cache texture. So I hit that and it's gonna ask for a directory and select the directory. And there we go. Now this is just a regular texture map right there. You can turn these other three off if you want to. Doesn't really matter if they're on or off. They're not being calculated because they're covered 100% by the one at the top here. And look, it's working in Octane. So there you go. You can preview your stuff in your viewport and then render it in Octane. And you're only going to be missing. Now, this doesn't look exactly like this because Octane doesn't actually understand it, what a diffuse amount is. Let me just turn that off now. Looks much more like Octane. So, um, so yeah, you can actually. It's a much simpler workflow if you if you want to use Moto's procedurals in Octane. You just cache them. You can set it to a higher resolution, and then when you're happy with how everything looks, you just you know click here and you save it, and it'll save the images. And there you go. Now it's working in Octane. So that's texture caching in a nutshell. Uh, I think it actually works quite well. I also like that our advanced viewport is looking more and more like the actual rendered output. And, you know, it's interesting to see where this is going to go with Moto. I really do think the shader tree is just a fantastic way to texture assets nowadays, especially with a PBR workflow. And one of the greatest things about the shader tree is it just takes such little room, right? It just doesn't take a lot of room or a nodal setup um really you know if you're using Maya or something like that it just sucks up so much of your real estate you're always looking at these tiny little renders whereas in shader tree you, you can really expand um your, you know your renders be much bigger and you just have just a little tiny workspace over here and a lot of things like layering and blend modes and opacities and stuff like that it's just it's just so much easier so i'm pretty excited about where the shader tree is going i think this was a necessary feature Again, there's some like uh, deleting and restarting it when you add new 
um, uh, layers to the mask that I've noticed, but it seems to pick up changes to the parameters really consistently. And you know, you can pump up the resolution, you can save them out, and uh, overall, I just think it's a really nice new feature. Yum, yum!